Shorty. What are you doing up? Because we took you out of that warm crib at Aunt Vicky's, huh? Yeah. I'll warm up here. You just try and sit still for a minute, okay? What are you looking at? You're a wonderful father. You are. Never thought I'd hear anybody say that to me. Why not? Well, look at my role models. I mean, everybody knows Victor Lord's sterling reputation. I don't know whether I was better off being abandoned by him or if I was lucky that I wasn't raised by him. And then there's the warm, lovable Peter Manning. His favorite hobby was to kick the crap out of me. What a pair of fathers. Makes me kind of happy. I never knew mine. But that's not going to be the case for you, is it, Star? No wonder it's so hard for you to trust anyone, even me. Well, I'm up. I'm gonna go get your favorite blanket, okay? Be right back. Which one's your favorite blanket? Oh, it was, um, it was Rivers. It's been washed so many times. It's just nice and fuzzy, but she loves it, don't you, sweetie? I'll be right back. So many things to learn about you. Favorite blanket, your favorite food. How to shut you up when you cry. I mean, do you like to be rocked? Or do you like the bounce? And I feel like I gotta learn it all so quickly, you know, because you're gonna change. And you are, you know. I'll be there for you. It won't be like it was with me. I would lie down in front of a train for you. And no matter what, no matter what, no matter what you decide to do, you could be a bank robber or an accountant. It, it, it wouldn't matter. I would never make you feel stupid worthless or bad. afraid. Maybe you'll even like people. Wouldn't that be nice, huh, Squirt?
don't, don't, don't get it. No, I gotta get it. Uh, but... but recall, this slate's gotta be something important, right? All right. I'm gonna go Hello? put her down. Try to get rid of Briggs? whoever it is, please. Briggs, hey. Come on. Slow down, all right? I, I can't even tell what you're saying. Well, who wrote the article? And don't tell me Kevin Buchanan, because I'll blow an artery. Well, Kevin Buchanan and Cassie Carpenter. Damn. Damn it. What? Your cute cousin Cassie and my bratty nephew Kevin, they're regular Woodward and Bernstein. Tom, what happened? Well, the banner's running an exclusive in tomorrow's paper about how our fearless mayor is using city funds to buy herself a baby. Well, how'd you hear this? Well, Briggs still has a buddy at the banner. So some typesetter called him to, to rub it in his face about how the banner scooped me. Wait, wait, how did they get the story? I don't know how they got the story. Wait a minute. Cassie has a connection at the mayor's office. Well, how do you know that? Well, just a conversation that I had with her before. When? Well, I don't know exactly well, before when. Before she but... jumped ship? Yeah, but... Oh. If Cassie was working on that article, she was still working at the Sunday. That means that story is mine. Huh. Now go ahead. Come on, say it. No, I know you're, I know you're dying to say it, but go ahead. I should never have fired Cassie, right? Yeah. Todd, I am not going to criticize you about Cassie. That is old news, but as far as this new news is concerned, I mean, there's nothing that you can do about it tonight. There's They've already put the There's something that I can do about it. I'm going to stop the presses. I'll have them put together a front page full of stock shots so I don't come off looking like a total bozo. And then I'm going to wake up my lawyer. I'm going to get him out of bed. And I swear to God, I'm going to sue Cassie Carpenter for writing a paper, writing a story for the banner on my dime. Come on, Todd. There's nothing that you can do about it tonight. What just wait I'm not tomorrow. going down without a fight, Blair. <laughs> it's okay. I could use the R&R with the day I've got ahead of me. Oh, yeah. I guess the banner's keeping you very busy. You know, I read your article. It's a great story. Really wonderful piece. Thanks. Loved your headline. Yeah. If we only had a story to go with it. Well, you would have thought it hadn't fired me. You know, maybe it was the best thing. I mean, we're just a tabloid. We can't buy anything that comprehensive. <laughs> So how long did it take you to, to write that? Months, probably, huh? I type fast. We both know that you worked on that expose while you were working for me. If family loyalty means anything to you, you won't let the band print the rest of it. Well, Kevin and Cassie are working on part two, so you'll have it ready to run by press time. Okay. Not if I have anything to say about it. And I do. Good morning, Todd. What can I do for you? Oh, good morning. I'll let this do the talking for me. Judge Warner writes a great injunction, don't you think? This one says that the first part of the expose about Mayor Alex is going to be your last. Last time you lectured me on family loyalty, I gave up a good job at the banner to come work for my cousin. And all I got in return was a pink slip from my cousin's husband. If that's what I should expect from family loyalty, I think I'll stick with those strangers over at the banner. Look, I, I know that you were devastated when Todd no, fired you. No, I wasn't you. devastated. But I was very angry that you let him. Oh, I let him. Look, I did everything I could to protect you. You know that. Just like I'm doing right now, because Todd... He wants to take you to court, Cassie. Let him. The banner will back me up. Oh, you are such a happy little girl, aren't you? You are so happy. You know, I think she's been so much happier these days, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> I think, look, look at that. that. I think it's because you have your family around you all the time. Isn't that right? You know, sometimes it just, just seems so perfect and... Then there are other times.